Hello photographers, my name is Spiros Heniatis. This is where I answer your photography questions and we learn about photography together. And this is the second video in my series on composition. Now, if you haven't seen the first video, you can check that one out by clicking this annotation right here. And we use composition to create images that are compelling and interesting to look at. And in the first video, we looked at how the arrangement of the elements in your composition creates a visual path to engage the viewer in your photograph. And today we're going to look at how changing the perspective can increase interest and engagement in your photograph. Now there's this social knowledge that we all share, and this knowledge that we all carry around in our brains allows us to survive and function on a day-to-day -day basis. And our brain uses this knowledge to categorize, identify, and file away all of the stimuli that we are constantly bombarded with every single day. Let's look at an example. Last week we learned that when we look at a photo like this, our brains look for and establish a visual pathway through the image. Now as your brain is establishing that pathway, at the exact same time, your brain is also processing what it sees in the image. So as it's establishing the visual pathway, your brain also recognizes that this this is a photo that you are looking at. So now it's categorized this visual stimuli as not real, but a representation of something real. Then it processes the contents of this image. It recognizes the building complex as a series of industrial buildings. It identifies the railroad tracks and then deduces that a train uses those tracks to come back and forth from the buildings across this body of water. Your brain also sees that there is some motion in the water and it might determine that this is a river. It also recognizes activity at the complex from the steam rising from the stacks into the blue sky and it determines that this photo was recorded during the day as the sky is blue and the sun is shining from the left which you can tell because the left sides of the building are brighter than the front sides. Your brain may also notice that the wind is blowing from the right of the photo because it notices the steam drifting to the left and it's probably noticing a million other tiny details that I'm not even covering here. And this automatic function of our brain that recognizes and categorizes things for us allows us to function on a day-to-day -day basis without going insane from all of the stimuli that we are dealing with. And this all happens instantaneously. Think about it for a second. What would it be like if you did not know what a car was or what a computer was or how the computer functioned or what the ringing of a cell phone was or what that noise even meant? There is so much stimuli around us that our brain is constantly processing it and dealing with it. And it does this as fast as possible. This allows us to simply exist and be and function in our daily lives. When we compose a photograph, we want to break this cycle. We want to stop the instantaneous categorizing and filing away of information. What we're trying to do is force the brain to slow down. Because if your brain sees and recognizes and files away and categorizes everything in the photo, it's not going to be very engaged in that photograph. And we can force the brain to slow down by changing the perspective of our photos. Let's look at this photo again. This is a perspective of an industrial complex that you don't see every day. Most industrial complexes are seen in passing. Maybe when you drive past it on the road, or you might see the tip of a building or a smokestack in the distance. You might not even see the buildings, but you might just hear it off in the distance. Or you may have never seen an industrial complex because you don't live anywhere near one. But what we have here is a rather intimate view across the water of a complex, which is something that you don't see every day. And because this is a different perspective, you actually force the brain to slow down and take time to process what it sees. And this translates as interest and engagement in the photograph. So let's take a look at another example. Here's a fork. It's an instrument that's used on a daily basis to consume food. And here again, we're looking at a different perspective that forces the brain to slow down. This makes this photo more interesting and enjoyable to look at. And this is how we normally might see a fork. This is a normal human point of view. And when we see things from this human viewpoint, which is typically above and looking down and surrounded by all sorts of other things as part of the environment, our brain looks at this and processes it, categorizes it, files it, and then it's done with it. This happens because the brain assumes that at this perspective, the normal human viewpoint, we need to deal with the stimuli right now so that we can function in this environment. When we put these pictures side by side, the difference is very clear. On the left, you have the fork in the drawer from a normal point of view, and the inference is that we're ready to eat, so we need to get the fork out of the drawer and find 
find the food. Food is important to survival, so the fork is just a means to an end. And the brain is not even sure what the subject of this photo is, because not only do we see the forks, but we see spoons and knives and other food-related implements. And this reinforces the idea that what we're looking at is getting ready to eat. And these are the tools that we need to eat. So then the brain is done with the photo because it's not looking at the photo, it's thinking about where to find the food. Now compare that to the fork all by itself on the right. What does your brain think? It doesn't know what to think. Now we know that we use forks to eat, but it's not surrounded by other things that are associated with eating. And this fork looks different because when was the last time you actually looked at a fork from this angle with nothing else around it? And when you do this, the brain processes this differently. So your brain is in process mode and it's trying to understand this fork in this context and it's trying to decide how to deal with and how to categorize this fork. So it's engaged with the fork and it's looking at it because it's trying to figure it out. So when you're composing your photos, you need to consider this. You need to consider and use the perspective to force the brain to slow down and engage with the photograph that you are creating. And to do this, to use perspective in your composition is actually quite simple. First, one of the important things to do is isolate the subject. This removes the subject from its normal context. And this forces the brain to process the subject slower with more engagement because it's trying to figure the subject out. Isolating your subject is pretty simple. You can do it like I did with the fork by setting it up in a controlled environment where you put it on a clean backdrop and you simply photograph that object. You can also isolate your subject using shallow depth of field when you have the subject in sharp clean focus and everything else in the background is out of focus in addition to isolating your subject you can get closer to your subject this goes hand in hand with isolation because when you get close to your subject you naturally isolate it by removing all of the elements around it that don't directly support the subject you're trying to photograph the closer you get the less stuff you're including in your composition here's an example look at this photo of a bottle of wine in this shot it's not entirely clear Clear that the wine is even the subject of this photo and the brain processes this scene at its normal breakneck pace but when we get closer it eliminates all of the distracting elements that the brain has to process and it again forces the brain to slow down and work on this bottle to look at it and take it in and getting closer also changes the perspective because we don't normally look at things that closely we normally see them from a typical human distance this is anywhere from a foot or two away to hundreds of feet away and when you get really close and you're looking at something, you're not seeing it in a way that you normally see it. And finally, another thing you can do to change your perspective is change the angle at which you shoot. Let's look at the fork again. From this point of view, there's nothing interesting here to look at because this is a view you see every single day. So you need to get out of this human point of view, the point of view of you standing and looking at something or looking down at something because that's how you always see it. Instead, get down on the same level as your subject. Move all around it, up and down. Get above it. Sometimes above it works, but move around the subject. Get down at its level. Move off to the side. Get underneath it. Find an angle that is unusual and different that you don't normally see and photograph the subject at that angle. And when you do all of these things, isolate the subject, get closer to it, and get down at a different angle, you're going to force the brain to slow down because it doesn't normally see this. And it has to deal with it slower. It has to engage with it and try to figure it out and understand it. And this creates an interesting and engaging photo to look at. All right, guys, that's all I've got for you this week. I hope you enjoyed this second video on composition. We've got more coming, so stay tuned. And if you have any questions on changing perspective or other composition stuff, leave them down in the comments below. And while you're down there, do me a favor, share with me your favorite composition tip. Now, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel. If you really like this video, do me a huge favor and share it with your friends. But you know what? I don't care what you do. As long as you get out there and take some damn photos, I'll see you next week. Just make sure you're not so close that it can't focus. Because that's no good, is it?